Not answering your questions live about trademarks, copyrights, and anything else IP you would like to ask me. Now, my friend Rob Anspa wanted to know, he said, you see these gurus teaching people how to buy and sell domains, but very rarely do they tell them about the negative aspects of domain squatting, nor what will happen when they're told to hand over a domain. I know someone who bought a domain with the real word realtor in it, like realtor for life or realtor help. He was actually studying to be a realtor. 24 hours after buying the domain, he received a letter telling him to turn it over. He let it expire a year later, but he did receive several threatening letters. Seems some companies monitor the purchase of domains just to be vigilant in defending their IP. Is this prudent for a $10 domain that may or may not ever be used? Hi, Linda, <laughs> nice to have you here. Uh, well, Rob, to answer your question, there are trademark owners who are much more vigilant than others about protecting their IP. And the realtor people happen to be one of one such a uh, trademark owner, they are very, very vigilant about protecting their realtor trademark. And I don't know if you know that the word realtor actually is a trademark for a whole bunch of stuff. And when you're a trademark owner, one of the things that you get to do is you get to force people who have registered domains with your trademark in them to hand over the domain to you if they're just squatting on it. Now, if it's a famous domain, like Realtor, a famous trademark rather, like Realtor, then they may have extra um, protection against things like dilution and tarnishment which is another subject altogether, but we can talk about that if people have questions. They have a right to prevent their trademark from being diluted or tarnished by people who are using their trademark in their domain. So yes, they do have that right. And they're justifiably very protective of that trademark because it is so valuable to them. They actually charge people who sell real estate a fee to use the term realtor. So that piece of intellectual property, because they're licensing it to people, that piece of intellectual property is very, very valuable to them. Hey, Erin, nice to see you here, fellow attorney. My fellow attorneys watch me on Facebook. I love it. Um, so that piece of intellectual property is very valuable to them from a licensing standpoint. And the people who are licensing it from them justifiably have the expectation that other people who aren't paying to license it, right? So there's a bunch of people who are paying to license it. So why would they pay to license it if other people could just waltz in and use it without paying? That makes no sense. If you're paying for something, the idea that somebody else is getting to use what you're paying for for free is kind of offensive, right? We would all agree with that. So the realtor people are very, very vigilant about protecting that trademark. And you can actually, there's a, uh, a Uniform Domain Transfer Act, that's not what it's called, it's called UDERP. Sounds like something you, know, <laughs> you do after a big meal, I don't know. But um, there's actually a process for having domains that were registered and uh, it's kind of an anti-squatting thing. If you acquired the trademark, you own the trademark, you registered the trademark, and then somebody else came in afterward and registers a domain using your trademark, you have the right to force the transfer of that. And there is actually a uniform domain recovery process for that. And if anybody has that sort of issue, I invite them to contact me because I do that sort of thing. Another example of uh, someone, uh, an entity that is super vigilant about protecting their trademark is Entrepreneur Magazine. Now, Entrepreneur Magazine granted a, a descriptive mark, but they got the mark because they have been using it so long in commerce that now it is, it's acquired what we call in trademark land secondary meaning, meaning that the mark entrepreneur is now associated with entrepreneur magazine and the other things that they produce. So if you register or attempt to register something um, business related, like related to magazines or podcasts or something like that with the term entrepreneur in it, you will hear 
from Entrepreneur Magazine, okay? They are very vigilant about protecting their trademark. So if you tried to register a domain name with Entrepreneur in it, you may hear from them. So, you know, it. not everybody is that, uh, how do I wanna say, vicious is the wrong word because I think they absolutely have a right to do it. Not everybody is that um, diligent about protecting their trademark. But when you have a word like entrepreneur or a word like realtor that everybody seems to want to use, then you have to be extra vigilant about shutting down any potential infringers because that could get out of hand really, really quickly. When you're known as being vigilant and diligent and um, forceful about protecting your trademarks, people infringe less because they know, like the word gets out. I tell my clients, listen, do not try to use entrepreneur for anything like related to magazines and media. Uh, entrepreneur magazine will be all over you and you know, they'll shut you down. So let's pick something else. So having had clients who have heard from Entrepreneur Magazine, believe me, I am diligent about telling my clients, look, let's stay away from that because I just know it's we're just buying trouble, right? And they're not gonna get their mark because Entrepreneur is gonna send a nasty letter, tell them to cease and desist, and the trademark office is gonna hear from them. They're gonna file an opposition. Even if the trademark examiner says, hey, okay, I'm approving the mark, Entrepreneur is gonna come in and go, nope, we're gonna file an opposition and um, you know, prevent you from getting your mark or at least try and we're gonna make a whole bunch of trouble for you. And I just tell my client, look, even if, even if the trademark examiner agrees with us, it's not worth it to try to fight Entrepreneur Magazine, so let's pick something else. Anyway, what other questions do people have? I am here answering questions and if there aren't any more, I will sign off and uh, get back to my my regularly scheduled programming, so to speak. So if anyone has any questions, please put them in the comments. I'm actually looking at the comment stream right now using this nifty piece of technology that I'm happy to share with people if you uh, want, want a tip, Aaron. So if you wanna know, Aaron, Aaron's a fellow attorney who likes to do live streams. Aaron, if you wanna know about this technology, let me know, it's pretty spiffy. Um, but if there isn't, anything more that people want to ask me, I'm going to say goodbye and wish everybody a uh, blessed Good Friday and a blessed Easter. And uh, I will see you all later. Bye.